crew, I've got the key to that. Oh, that's a BMW Alpina XB7. That's that's not the 911 ST. Ah, okay, here it is. To that Porsche 911 ST. And on this very rainy day, we're gonna see what this vehicle is like to live with. Starting with the spacing in my driveway. With it parked next to this Alpina XB7 that my wife is reviewing, that's actually parked a little off the edge here of my driveway. And with the 911 ST being a few inches in from the edge, that provides plenty of room to walk between the two vehicles or like I do in my family, wheel a stroller through. Now, because the ST is on this side of my driveway, whereas normally it's over here, I'm gonna be opening the passenger side door just to show you spacing for getting inside. And we do not have smart keyless entry, even on this as tested $300,000 car, because it's about saving weight. So you do have to hit unlock on the key fob for the doors to unlock. And then trying to protect the leather with my umbrella here, we'll see that I can open it one notch there, two notches, and I mean with this spacing, I can go all the way to three notches to open up and gain access to the vehicle. I will now close that door and walk over here to the driver's side. Hey, cabin crew. Thank you for joining me for this day in the life video with the Porsche 911 ST. And in this video, I wanna see, especially in conditions like this, if you can daily drive a vehicle of this caliber, this sporty pedigree. Now, let's be clear, I'm going to have fun behind the wheel of this car, uh, because if you're buying an ST, it's not just to drive it in the rain and get groceries. So tomorrow, when the weather report looks more favorable, I will take this to a good road and, and I'll get on it. But for today, I'm just gonna get some coffee and run some errands. And before any of that, I need to cleanse myself of the bulkier items I've brought with me, like my GoPro accessories, which it could kind of go right there, although I wouldn't want them to fly out and go under the pedals. And speaking of which, I still have my umbrella over here and that needs to be moved to either the passenger side footwell or to all this open space behind the front seats because we don't have rear seats in the ST and that's probably where the GoPro accessories would go as well in the cubbies. Then I've got my smartphone, which does have a little cutout opening here in the console. It's not a wireless charging pad, but it holds it just fine. And then we've got my wallet, which maybe that should just go right here. And the key fob can join it. So, I mean, pretty decent storage for at least small items and big ones can go back there. Now, let's start up the ST. It is certainly a distinctive flat six startup. Yeah, not exactly subtle. Um, it's so deep that it shakes what's around it. Uh, so when they dropped out this vehicle yesterday and it was sitting there idling in front of my house for a bit, I was upstairs in my bedroom and just the bed was just quivering a little bit. So it's not the loudest thing in the world, but man, that vibration of the flat six is going to carry. Ah, uh, yes, and I kind of rushed this point getting in the first time, but these are just fixed carbon buckets. They can slide forward or backward, but there's no tilt or adjustment, and these bolsters are very deep. So getting in, I find myself just sitting on the side bolster and then move my booty over as the most comfortable slash not painful way of getting inside the ST. And I'm finally ready to roll here, which I'm sure my neighbors are thankful for. So I have the hydraulic nose lift activated. So even if I didn't have the curb ramps that I have in front of my driveway with the gutter there, I could still have the clearance I need. E-brake is off here and I'm just eking out the clutch and rolling forward. Speaking of that nose lift, probably the coolest part about it for living with the 911 ST is that it can actually memorize, based on GPS data, where you always want to lift the nose. So if you have a daily commute and you always get into work and there's always that one driveway where you need that clearance, it'll remember to set the nose lift there or in your own neighborhood, whether your driveway or something else in your neighborhood, it always needs to raise the nose for clearance. Again, it'll remember that. So it's one less thing you have to worry about for daily driving. And pertinent to discuss in these rainy conditions are the windshield wipers. So like most, you can just pull down once and get one wipe, or you can go up and set your different speeds, the quickest of which 
definitely wipes away all the water while never really making any noise. Some windshield wipers, the motors are always churning, making noise, and the wiper blades are always squeaking. These are effectively silent. Not that you'd hear a whole lot over the sound of that flat six anyway. Speaking of, what's the sound of the turn signal? Very traditional and satisfying at that. And now how about the turning radius? Got the wheel cranked here. And you know, I worried about the fact that the ST doesn't have the rear wheel steering system of the 911 GT3 Touring, what that would do to the turning radius, and it's still fantastic. Speaking of pleasant surprises in this ST, I mean, you hear the roughness of that idle from this GT3 RS derived powertrain, but that does have a lightened flywheel, which is contributing some of the, some of the rattling noise, some of the vibration. Anyway, you hear that and you think, oh, this car is gonna ride rough. But that's not what I've been experiencing here around town. If anything, I mean, look at this. Steel grates, big gaps and ruts in the road. This thing is, if anything, more compliant than a regular GT3. It's still taut and firm and it moves around over stuff. You feel the bumps, but they do not punish you. By the same token, these seats, which look very aggressive with the fixed buckets and the deep recess, as long as your body type fits like mine does, there's enough padding here. I'm, I'm comfortable. I've got all this headroom. I feel I've got a ton of space around me. It's really very nice. The vantage point is excellent. I can move this steering wheel tilt and telescope it perfectly got a great driving position and I mean look at all of this water that's just hovering on the surface of the tarmac for most high-powered rear drive sports cars I'd be a little bit nervous but even on these Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires a very aggressive street slash track compound this car has felt so sure-footed, and I think a lot of it is the design of having the engine just hanging out over the rear tires. It's just so planted here, that doesn't encourage me to turn off traction or stability control at any point in time and see what happens. But I mean, just getting up to speed, accelerating, it's very stable, shockingly stable. And the power delivery, there aren't all these other drive modes like you get in other 911 products. It's just this naturally aspirated motor, linear power delivery, a smooth buildup. And as soon as you're above 3000 RPM, the gruffness of that idle is gone. The brakes are easy to modulate, these standard carbon ceramics, no squeaking from them. And the clutch, as soon as you get used to the later release point, it's easy to feel out. You get that friction point. You understand when you can pull your foot completely off it and apply more throttle. And furthermore, I don't actually have to blip my own throttle, rip, match my own revs. I can hit the auto blip, which is useful around town because I mean, in a track setting where you're getting deep into the brake pedal and you can kind of just roll your foot over and heel toe it, that's fine. But around town, I'm not gonna be doing that. So I don't necessarily want to double clutch everywhere, nor do I really want to rely on the synchro. So just auto blipping for the downshifts, that's awesome. You can really just drive this 911 ST whenever and wherever you want to go, which right now is, is to get some coffee. And here we are, the lost bean. I know what you're thinking, no puns, Miles, nothing about it being lost and you having found it. You're right. But I mean, it's true, I have, been here before. <laughs> I'm sorry. The dad jokes just flow out of me like the salmon of Capistrano. Here we are in reverse and we've got trajectory lines and there are water spots and actually when it was raining really heavy I tried reverse. I couldn't see anything out of the back of the camera. Thankfully I can right now and we got the parking sensors to help. Last thing I want to do is scrape up this very expensive sports car but we've got all we need. No surround view camera, that would be nice to have. But here we are. We're in our spot. E-brake is engaged. I'm leaving it in a first. And braving the storm. Wish me luck. Whew. Okay, here's what we've got. Decaf latte. Yes, decaf, because my body can't process caffeine. That goes 
with a little extra excitement into the cup holder, which is perfect size. And then, I indulge it a little bit. I got a breakfast burrito, because this spot's breakfast burritos are pretty darn good. And you might be thinking, well, surely you're not gonna eat that in that $300,000 9-11. And the answer is, surely I am. Because you see what I can do is protect myself in the car a little bit with the wrapper, and then, using the top of the coffee, I can hold on to the salsa, dump it in, and then dig in. That's what I was looking for. <sighs> now that I'm full, I can actually go grocery shopping without a fear of overbuying in a state of hunger. Happens to me a lot. All right, got my groceries, two bags worth, and some flowers for my wife, because she deserves them. And no need to put these in the 911 ST, and here's my first problem with this trim of the 911, because typically you can kind of just swipe your hand on the nose and that will pop the frunk, but this vehicle doesn't have that feature to save weight. So I do have to put a bag down on the wet ground. Thankfully, it's not still raining. Fish out the key fob and hit the frunk button. That will pop that, then I fish in here for the release, lift it up, and find a massive front trunk area. This is going to easily swallow up these groceries and give me plenty of room off here to the side to delicately place those flowers. Perfect. And that's about all I've got on the docket for today. With the weather starting to clear up, I'm expecting tomorrow to be nice and dry for me to take the 911 ST to a great road and explore that aspect of its living with potential. Man, I was really hoping it would be drier than this, but it rained all of last night and it stayed cold and damp all morning. So the road surface is still a little slick and therefore for this real world zero to 60 test with my race box set up to record, I'm not expecting the best time out of this rear drive 911 ST. Though that doesn't mean I'm not going to still do a launch control. So to engage that in this car, you just go into first, clutch in, pin the throttle, it'll hold the revs at 5,000 and then you get off that clutch. I'm ready. Here we go. There's 63.89 seconds with a whole lot of slip. That is acceleration. You can feel. <laughs> as much fun as that was, and honestly as easy as that was to launch this car, it's not something you'll likely do day to day. Uh, but if the opportunity presents itself, then in drier weather, you can expect to run to 60 in the three to three and a half second range, which is just wild. But more likely, an owner is going to take their ST to a good canyon road. So that's what I'm gonna go do right now. But on the way, we've got some time on the highway. Let's talk about the commuting potential of this car. And on louder road surfaces like that, we're getting a lot of tire noise, but all the time, because the gearing is so short, I'm chilling at 70 miles per hour in six, above 3,000 RPM. So we're just constantly hearing the churning from that flat six. And that is really the biggest noise you'll hear in this cab. And I think there's wind noise, but I can't hear it over the engine. I think there's road noise, can't hear it over the engine and I just hear the tire noise on loud road surfaces. So if you're fine with the sound of that motor, above 3,000 RPM, you're gonna be okay to commute in this. But man, having low level conversations with passengers, don't count on it. At least it drives nicely. And visibility wise, I can see out over that hood. The door mirrors are nice and large, though I do not have blind spot monitoring. So I'm kind of on my own for trying to see through this carbon fiber half roll cage system to see out that rear side glass. And this thing also affects the view out the back where it kind of looks like I'm peering out through chapel glass windows. It's not so bad. Water stubbornly continues to fall from the sky and that does put a damper on my plans here for this Canyon Road. I'll have to proceed with a bit more caution and just begin to layer in to the ST. Yes! Now we're here in that flat six trumpet. It's beautiful music as we approach the red line of 9,000 RPM. Peak power is coming in at 8,500. And with this lightened flywheel, it's easy to keep the revs up. Feeling very stable, even with the 
water just visible on the surface of the road. Even without the rear wheel steering system, the ST just bends into curves beautifully. has zero trouble getting power out corner exits yeah in incredible at how it gets the power down <laughs> the steering is sensational all of the communication all the information that I get through this rack which has been fine-tuned for the ST the different dynamics it provides without that rear wheel steering system. This is bliss. Inspiring a whole lot of confidence, even on a rainy day. The rain just keeps falling. But the 911 ST, just keep satisfying. Great feel from these carbon ceramics. Nice initial bite, even on slick surfaces. The tires holding fast as well. The chassis staying ultra stable. <laughs> I'm singing in the rain. Entertaining as the ST was in the wet, you know I had to wait for a drier day to stretch this car's legs properly. And now that day is here. <laughs> and I'm ready to enjoy it. This car is just mesmerizing. It pounces on every corner and then exits the other end with predictable grace. And without the threat of water now on the road surface, the adhesion is spectacular <laughs> what a road car now here's an interesting observation I've actually been able to go back and forth between the normal and sport suspension settings and whereas sport typically means just firmer ST, that's not what it means. Both normal and sport are equally compliant. It's more just like the buildup and release of kinetic energy that changes in sport. It's snappier, but no less tolerable. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. In fact, the only thing I could ever deem possibly intolerable about driving an ST would be running out of good places to take it or time to take it there. If I owned this car, I would do this all the time. I would skip out of work and do it. I would do it both weekend days and would make up stories to give me excuses to go do this. <laughs> Which begs the question, how's the 911 ST on gas? If you wanna be doing stuff like that all the time, are you gonna burn through your entire tank all too quickly? So all the events I did leading up to the latest fun run, the around town stuff, the on the highway, I was seeing the 15 combined MPG that the EPA rates this car at from 13 city and 17 highway. But from the last 
50-ish miles of highly aggressive driving, I've still been getting 13.6 miles per gallon. And obviously that's not something that's gonna draw accolades from Prius owners, but I think it's still pretty impressive given the exercise that just put this car through, it's not all that far off the combined rating. It's also not that small of a tank, 23.7 gallons. So if I was getting 15 combined at BG, then I'd have over 350 miles on a tank. That does mean that the fuel ups are gonna be more expensive. And when a gallon of 91 octane fuel is running, what, $5.47, it's gonna cost me 130 bucks to fill this car. And moment of truth, no capless fueling. Come on, Porsche. That's an interesting noise of air release. At the beginning of this video, I wondered aloud whether you could daily drive something this sporty in all weather, in all situations. And in reality, it's highly unlikely that someone who can afford a $328,000 as tested 911 ST is without some other form of transportation for the daily grind. But in the fringe case that they are, or they're just between their second, third, or fourth vehicle, then they certainly could live with this thing every single day. The front is massive, the ride is compliant, the seats, if you can fit in them, are pretty comfortable. The nose lift is clutch for clearance, it's not terrifying to drive in the rain. Oh, and uh, in the right environment, this is some of the most fun I've ever had behind the wheel of a car. Would I choose this as a daily driver? Probably not. I mean, it's pretty loud on the highway, the idle isn't exactly pleasant sounding, and there are hardly any conveniences for this money. There's no wireless smartphone charging, there's no blind spot monitoring, no head-up display. But if the choice was daily driver or no 911 ST, just take my money. I hope you guys have enjoyed this day in the life video, and I will see you again next time.